transforming healthcare in the community, the experience of and perspective from a civil society organization. This morning, I would like to share with you the journey in transforming healthcare in the community, particularly rural communities, from the lens of Health Futures Foundation Incorporated, a civil society organization or CSO, the preferred term now used for NGOs. Now, transformation is a big word especially in the context of healthcare. Likened to the metamorphosis of a caterpillar, it is a profound fundamental change that alters something which can never go back to exactly what it was before. It entails hard work and careful planning, just as a caterpillar carefully sheds its skin and wraps itself in a protective shell and waits for the change to come. Health Futures Foundation, or HFI, works in marginalized areas all over the Philippines with a mission to empower marginalized Filipino families and local governments in achieving access, quality, and equity in health and development through actual and virtual communities of wellness. After seeing firsthand the appalling state of healthcare in rural communities of the Philippines, HFI was founded in 1998 to create communities of wellness to help address the inequity of healthcare. These goals are the gist and at the very heart of my work as executive director of HFI. Like an ugly, prickly, slow-moving caterpillar, can the state of community healthcare transform itself into a beautiful butterfly? Let me begin with a story. Meet 42-year-old Karim from Sitio Ventidos in one of our barangays in Samar. Sitio Ventidos is way up in the mountains and, as its name implies, about 22 kilometers from the barangay. Travel time to or from the barangay proper is at least an hour because the road connecting the two wasn't paved. Transportation in the area is cars, only a few habal habal motorcycles with wooden planks that serve as passenger seat lashed to their frames fly the route between the town center and the far-flung sitio. A one-way trip costs 300 pesos, an amount Karin couldn't afford with a family daily income of 200 pesos and a household of 13. Connectivity is likewise a challenge in Sitio 22. Karin was pregnant with her 12th child. Because of the distance between her home and the rural health unit, Karin managed to have only two prenatal checkups. In the middle of one night, Karin felt contractions. She rode the habal habal and felt every bump on the road. Through 60 minutes of travel, she had to hold on to dear life, lest she gets thrown off. Karin never made it to town. Just as she reached the barangay, Karin gave birth with the help of a helot, a traditional birth attendant. As customary, Karin stayed in the barangay under the care of the helot after her delivery. Two days later, the barangay health worker reported the infant was febrile. The umbilical cord had been infected. Karin's story is a 21st century scenario common to villages where we work, Inalad in Samar, 
as God in Salcedo Eastern Samar and even Looc in Balete, Batangas. The situation hasn't changed much since the 1980s. Like Karing, people in most of these marginalized communities are still confronted with the following ch challenges. First, limited access to basic healthcare services. There is no BHS or the BHS is too far. Limited knowledge on health. Isolation has resulted in insufficient knowledge on health and how to take care of themselves. Lack of a health professional. There are usually no doctors at the barangay level or they are far from the center. Nurses and midwives come either once or twice a month for vaccinations, prenatal care, and other DOH activities. Next is lack of financial resources for food security, transportation, or for health emergency. And last is lack of connectivity. They are so remote that technology does not reach them. Or if it does, the people have little to no means to maintain connectivity, such as purchasing credits for SMS or calls. Such conditions have contributed to people dying without seeing a health professional. Complications abound that could have been prevented. If we review the top five causes of morbidity, those on the list are easily preventable. Thus, the burden of sickness could have been avoided. According to the WHO, a well-functioning health system responds in a balanced way to a population's needs and expectations by improving the health status of individuals, families, and communities, defending the population against what threatens its health, protecting people against the financial consequences of ill health, providing equitable access to people-centered care, and making it possible for people to participate in decisions affecting their health and the health system. Based on these WHO parameters, much remains to be desired in the health system in rural communities. The current health system in the community also fails to show features of a healthcare system rooted in primary health care, such as equity, universal access, community participation, among others. More than 40 years of living in and working with communities confirmed the fact what was true in the past continues to the present. Six out of 10 Filipinos die without seeing a doctor or a health professional. People still die due to largely preventable diseases. Health facilities are still way too difficult to reach from geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. Affordable health care is still beyond the means of the marginalized Filipino. People get even more impoverished when illness strikes the family. This was and still is the sad state of health care for the majority of the poorest of the poor. The challenge. Now, will we just stand and watch people die? Like dehydrated cocoons, hoping to see the light of day as a new being, but trapped in the darkness of their dried out chrysalis. Or like a ring, holding on to dear life during childbirth. Similar to a caterpillar, inching its way to a cocoon holding on to dear life on a brittle twig, not knowing if it will die or will fulfill that distant dream 
of having a better life as a butterfly? Our answer. Alaga ka, established in 2010, is HFI's banner program. It aims to create health-empowered and self-reliant communities living in an improved, efficient, healthy, and organized locality with equity and quality health care. Alaga ka is deeply rooted in the primary health care approach focused on organizing and strengthening health systems and achieving the goal of improving access to health and well-being based on the needs and preferences of the people. The program also adopts the life course approach, which seeks to optimize health by meeting people's needs throughout all stages of life and realizing that health and healthcare are basic human rights. Alaga ka has three main pillars. First pillar is the establishment of an infrastructure for access to primary care services. Fully equipped and functional barangay health stations are constructed based on DOH specifications. Second pillar, the implementation of a community-based health and wellness project. An 18-month project of empowering the community through community organization, capacity building of community-based health workers on health promotion, disease prevention, and health mobilizations. Third pillar is the provision of inclusive and sustainable the livelihood opportunities. Optimum health cannot be achieved without development, so initiatives or linkages for economic growth are established. In the photo is a typical Alaga Ka Barangay Health Station or BHS. Alaga Ka is guided by the UHC principles with the main goal of achieving sustainable development goal number three, to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all ages. Our efforts at being socially inclusive were affirmed when in 2018, Alaga Ka was one of three programs in the, in the Philippines to be included in the UNESCO Three Country Research for the project Valorization of Research and Evidence on Inclusive Social Development to Achieve the SDGs of the Philippines. Affirmations such as this push us out of our comfort zone towards the courage zone. Transformation is not a walk in the park, a caterpillar cannot stay forever in its protective cocoon if it wants to become a beautiful butterfly. We have to move forward. And in moving forward, we use the following principles and approaches which we have found transformative. The principles of transformation. First principle, empowerment. The WHO, in its seventh global conference on health promotion, defined empowerment as the process by which people gain control over factors and decisions that shape their lives. Regardless of the definition, empowerment at its core serves as a guiding principle in all our projects. The end goal of all our projects is to shift from being community-based to community-managed. When a caterpillar hatches, it has to push itself to eat a lot so it can grow fast and big enough to make its own cocoon. It has to act on its own and goes through the process of change, determined to move towards its goal of becoming a butterfly. 
Like a caterpillar, communities are encouraged to practice self-determination. Second principle, participatory and bottom-up approach. There can be no transformation without the participation of the stakeholders. The health action plan involves the community in all its developmental stages to give them a sense of ownership, which, strength, which strengthens the sustainability of initiatives started. In promoting health through education, content is based on needs assessment with the community-based health workers and the results of the social investigation. We start where the people are, we plan with them, implement with them, evaluate with them. The use of the evocative method is interactive and participative and involves discussing and arriving at conclusions. This process not only determines where the people are in terms of the issue at hand, but also to learn from them. This process leads to transformative learning because it promotes critical thinking skills, facilitating the application of theory to the learner's own life experiences. Third principle, moving together. Transforming the health system cannot be achieved without the cooperation and involvement of various sectors. The local governments are the cornerstones of project sustainability. The municipality and barangay LGUs are valuable partners necessary for change. For example, legal structures and policies for community empowerment are instituted and put in place through Sangunian Bayan resolutions. Transformation needs fuel for the wheels of change to turn. Intersectoral linkages and partnerships are of prime importance. HFI works with philanthropists, the academe, international funding agencies like Direct Relief, the private sector, like Takeda Healthcare Philippines, EM Konsuni Holdings, 8 Under Par Palawan Pawn Shop, United Architects of the Philippines, other CSOs like Sun Life Foundation, JCI Ortigas, IPI Foundation, government agencies like the DOH, DSWD, and the DA, to mention a few. The fourth principle is a holistic approach to quality care. Focus is not mainly on health, but also on wellness. Health is a state of well-being. Wellness aims to enhance well-being. Wellness allows the person to be the best that he or she can be to grow in the following eight dimensions. Economic, physical, emotional, intellectual, social, environmental, spiritual, and occupational. Being holistic includes cultural sensitivity. Thus, best practices of Filipino and Asian traditional medicine are integrated in the training curriculum. The fifth principle is leaving no one behind. The bias of Alagaka is for the segment of society who have been left behind. The disenfranchised poorest 20 million of Filipinos, the disadvantaged barangays, the marginalized third to sixth class municipalities, the poorest provinces, the indigenous peoples. In the training of the BHWs and health cluster leaders, the slow learners are nurtured until they achieve a level of mastery. We have pre and post tests to determine the level of learning. 
the passing rate is 75%. However, if this is not achieved the first time, mentoring and one-on-one -on -one coaching is done until the passing mark is attained. In the MCD project in Salcedo, to help rehabilitate health systems after the wrath of Hayan, all of the 41 barangays of the municipality were scored for the population at risk. If the patient could not come to the barangay health station for screening, the NCD team went out of their way to go to their households, to their workplaces, wherever they may be, to ensure, to ensure no one was left behind. Walang iwanan or in today's lingo, sana all. This was also the inspiration for establishing the midwifery and nursing scholarships for the indigenous peoples of the Blahan and Tibon. The ancient humans invented tools to make their tasks easier. For HFI, we use tools of transformation when we work with communities. The tools of transformation. First tool of transformation is health literacy. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services defines health literacy as the degree to which individuals have the ability to find, understand, and use information and services to inform health-related decisions and actions for themselves and others. To educate is to release one from the dungeons of darkness. Health literacy takes one out of the woods. There is greater compliance and cooperation when the level of health literacy is increased. We take great pains in explaining again and again and again until the patient gets it. Using the language of the community, visual aids, and behavior change communication materials. Paulit-ulit at paulit-ulit. For the NCD project, we developed the Alaga Ka Wellness Passport, which significantly helped compliance to medication, follow-up checkup, and lifestyle change. The second tool of transformation is health promotion and prevention. To create a community of wellness is to go beyond disease and cure. There are intentional efforts to not only give information regarding disease, but also to ensure actions and behavior change on how to be well and how to prevent the burden of being sick. Health mobilizations are initiated towards this goal, mindful of the inclusion of the social determinants affecting health. In keeping with our mission to help create a community of wellness among the netizens, HFI has launched health promotion on various media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and a website named I Alaga Ka. Informal health leaders is the third tool of transformation. PHWs are beset with a heavy workload. To support their work, cluster groups are organized and this become the nucleus for health information and mobilization. From these cluster groups, Leaders are elected among themselves and they are trained as well together with the BHWs. The cluster leaders act as informal health leaders, sentinels of health promotion in the community. Pretty much is true of the volunteer healthy lifestyle ambassadors in our NCD project who proved to be very strategic in motivating, coaching, and monitoring identified patients at risk 
in creating awareness on lifestyle diseases in the community. The BHWs and this informal health leaders we call wellness heroes. Heroes without capes, giving time, risking their lives to achieve a better health environment in their communities. The fourth tool of transformation, digitalization. The Barangay Health Stations are equipped with a computer that is, that is future-proofed for electronic data. When universal health care is finally completely rolled out, electronic data is essential for the constituents of the community to avail of the basic field health package. Teleconsults are in the pipeline in cooperation with the RHU. Volunteer primary doctors and private specialists are being invited to come into the frame. The PHWs have also been introduced to the use of apps in screening. The fifth tool of transformation is reflection and values formation workshops. The process of a butterfly's transformation comes from within. It needs to change in order to become a butterfly. Transformation starts from the heart. This is why value formation is an integral component of the training. In the value formation training, reflections and an introspective examination of the self are encouraged. The evocative method is a great vehicle for self-awareness and reflection. The role of the nurse in transformation in the community. First role is the nurse is a health care provider. The nurse gives primary care services and nursing care, whether at the BHS, at home, or places of work. Second, the nurse is a health educator, assessing training needs, conducting trainings, developing behavior change communication materials, coaching, and mentoring. Third, the nurse is a leader, managing the project, working with the community in planning, organizing, implementing, and evaluating the project. Fourth, the nurse is a community organizer, establishing cluster groups, working with the community, to define issues and guide them to think through and come up with solutions. Fifth, the nurse is a catalyst of change, inspiring and motivating changes in health behavior of individuals, families, and community. For the nurse to be an effective change agent in the community, the following competencies are necessary. Clinical skills, including a knowledge of Filipino traditional medicine, training and teaching skills, community organizing skills, people skills, a heart to serve, caring and compassionate, and a ton of patience and lots of passion. Although the process of transformation may be as slow as a caterpillar crawling. Our work in communities resulted in communities growing their own wings. These communities of wellness now have a basic health system in place for better delivery of health services. Community health workers are motivated and capacitated. BHWs are managing the BHS. The communities are more aware of health issues and how to take care of themselves. A community on the road to where health is in the hands of the people. Our approaches and the many ways our initiatives transform healthcare in the community are small steps towards achieving universal health care. WHO defines universal health care as a state where all people 
have access to necessary health services, including when and where such services are needed without financial hardships. On 20 February 2019, the UHC law was enacted in the Philippines. So what bearing does the UHC law have on nurses? The battle cry of universal health care is all for health towards health for all. Universal health care is a dream so near yet so far. The contribution of the nursing profession to the realization of this pursuit cannot be underestimated. Nurses need to be active players in the periphery to achieve the goal of universal health care. We have the knowledge and skills. We have the numbers. With nurses at the forefront in the 42,046 barangays and in collaboration with all the other members of the health team and other sectors, curative and preventive healthcare services will be within reach by 20 million Filipinos at the fringes of our society. Nursing leaders can look into the consulta package of PhilHealth, the initial step towards adopting a comprehensive approach to delivering primary care. The package requires a physician to be the main health provider. The reach of universal health care would be wider if nurses can be accredited with PhilHealth and be trained with competencies necessary to fulfill the same tasks in marginalized areas where there are no or there will be no doctors. My vision is to see a licensed nurse practitioner in every barangay, technically and culturally competent, with a genuine desire to serve with her hand, her head, and her heart. For this vision to be fulfilled, we need a second generation of nursing leaders in all levels of healthcare delivery system. In the mind and mold of J.D. Sotejo, Florence Nightingale, and the likes of our esteemed nursing leaders present. Trailblazers, visionaries, and with the grit to concretize the vision. Nurses can occupy leadership positions to lead improvements in healthcare, facilitating interprofessional collaboration. Equal emphasis on both institutional nursing and community-based nursing should continue to be given in state-supported university colleges of nursing. The UPCN particularly should inspire, empower, and provide opportunities for its graduates to work in communities at the periphery. More importantly, it behooves the UPCN to lead in training for community service, inculcate in its graduates the attitude of serving, particularly the poorest of the poor, with their hands, heads, and hearts. Innovations in nursing education did not limit itself to adapt to changing circumstances by incorporating the most updated and the most current, but more importantly, the most relevant. Transformation does not happen overnight. It takes a little longer, more heart and megatons of patience. I might not see the full transformation of the communities we work in, but it is enough that we have seen ripples towards change and that we have planted the seeds of wellness and empowerment for the community to grow and succeed. Commitment, focus, and single-mindedness are needed to create communities of wellness. 
Likewise, throughout this long journey towards the improvement in the lives of people, great humility is required. Transformation can be a very slow and humbling process as changes are woven into existing systems that have been carried out over the years. Most importantly, we have to remember that transformation is a process that starts within. And in a community, it only occurs when people act and act as one. Indeed, the transformation of healthcare at the community level is a long and arduous journey, but it is a journey with many people moving toward a common goal that drives us in our mission. Our battle cry is creating communities one barangay at a time. HFI has so far sown seeds of wellness in 23 areas in the Philippines and another 34 in the pipeline for the next four years. Universal health care, if properly implemented and with the cooperation of all sectors, has the capacity to create communities of wellness in all 42,046 barangays all at the same time. Universal health care would be the wave that would change the tide of health care in the community where the vision of a health for all Filipinos will be attained, where no Filipino will have to die without seeing a doctor. No Filipino will be impoverished because of medical expenses. No Filipino would have to suffer the burden of illness that are preventable. When from an ugly, prickly, slowly moving caterpillar, the state of health care in the community will have transformed into a beautiful butterfly. With every Filipino living in an improved, efficient, healthy, and organized locality with equity and quality health care. Join us in creating more communities of wellness. Thank you.